Aston Martin DBX 707, and I'm here in Sardinia, Italy to drive this thing, and sadly, Mark will not be joining us because he decided to stay behind in Rome to go on an eat, pray, love style adventure of self-discovery, where he was planning on stopping at every local Olive Garden to get the true authentic Italian experience. So what's the 707? Well, this is Aston Martin's fastest variant of the DBX. This is supposed to compete with things like the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentayga. However, this is unique because it's one of the few hyper expensive exclusive SUVs that's not on MLB Evo. But instead of me walking you through what they did to this thing technically, I'm gonna have someone who actually designed this car walk you through what they did. Hi, my name's Andy Tokely. I'm the uh, senior manager for vehicle engineering of DBX platform. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about the base car, um, so DBX is built on a ground up aluminium structure made of a mixture of aluminium, pressings, extrusions and castings. Um, it's bespoke to Aston Martin and also our chassis system is also bespoke. So we use a split double wishbone front suspension system and a multi-link rear suspension system. Our damper and spring setup is a triple volume air suspension system uh, with a Bilstein DT Sky damper. So that's a totally bearable active damper on both the compression and the rebound side. The driveline system for the car is uh, composed of a uh, nine speed automatic wet clutch transmission uh, with a Magna totally variable four wheel drive system and a rear E differential for the car. So the rear E differential for the 707 is upgraded from a 1400 newton meter clamp load up to a 1600 newton meter clamp load. So the base engine for the DBX 707 remains the same as the core car. However, we changed the turbochargers and recalibrated the engine to produce uh, 707 PS or 697 brake horsepower. So a big leap of a, over 150 brake horsepower. We've also upgraded the single piece carbon fiber prop shaft for the car to deal with the added torque, shock loading of launch starting the car and the higher top speed of 310 kph or 193 miles an hour. We've totally retuned the base uh, damping within the active dampers uh, and then completely revised the active tuning of both the dampers, the air springs and the e-arc system for the car. So there's been a big focus on keeping the ride comfort in the car and removing all use of active systems when the car's traveling in a, uh, a steady state. So the car remains very comfortable, compliant, soaks up big uh, inputs. And then when you're driving the car dynamically, we're switching everything actively a lot sooner in the car. So we're looking at all the driver control inputs, the steering, the brake, the throttle, to switch all of the active systems in the car. Uh, from a steering point of view, we've made some mechanical upgrades as well. So we've increased the lateral stiffness across the front axle of the car by 9%. We've done that by introducing a new shear panel onto the bottom of the subframe, and then also tying the subframe back into the body structure further down the car. So what that does in terms of steering is gives you a much quicker, more immediate on-centre response in the car. But when you get off-centre with the steering, everything gains in a very linear way. So obviously with the uh, hugely increased power, um, we've had to uh, add some stopping power to the car. Uh, so we've changed from a cast iron brake system to a carbon ceramic brake system for the car. So we're up to 420 millimetres uh, with a six piston caliper on the front and 390 millimetres with a single piston caliper on the rear. Um, so the key focus of the dynamic tune for this car was one to in increase precision for the customer. Um, so they always feel more than capable of using the 707 PS for the car, but also maintaining a great level of ride comfort. So we've actually changed some hardware elements as well to increase, improve the ride comfort for the car. Um, so two items are the increased stiffer top mount on the front suspension unit. So with the new damper valving, we've increased the damper forces into the car. So we've stiffened the top mount by 55% so the damper can do its job rather than the whole unit moving. 
We've also changed the longitudinal bush on the car from an elastomer to a hydro bush, so that gives us a load more damping to the, to the wheel when you get longitudinal inputs into the suspension, the result of which is a much uh, cleaner, more robust structural feeling car when you do hit impacts and potholes. Now with that out of the way, due to the fact that it is both snowing and raining on and off outside, I'm going to very briefly walk you through the interior space of the DBX 707. This is exactly what you're expecting from a ultra luxury, full size, two row SUV. And if you are familiar with Aston Martin, you realize that this is a company that does not prioritize technological gimmicks. And I actually appreciate that. Everything in this car is covered in organic or natural, highly expensive feeling leather and carbon fiber. Everything from the center console to the column mounted paddle shifters are covered in very expensive carbon fiber. And the rest of the switch gear is very expensive feeling. It's exactly what you should expect in a car that is a nearly quarter million dollars. The rear occupants in this car are also quite comfortable. You can be a full size adult and fit back there no problem. And Aston Martin claims when compared to many of its competitors on MLB Evo, you have more leg and foot space back there. When it comes to the control structure in this car, it's an interesting mix of physical and haptic controls. Your HVAC controls are both on a rocker and touch haptics, and all of your drive controls are physical as well. And when it comes to the rest of this cabin and the way you interact with it, you have a totally digital gauge cluster. It's very similar to what you see in the regular Aston Martin Vantage. It's relatively high resolution, but it's very fast acting. Your center infotainment display is very high resolution does not have a touchscreen, however, and that's largely due to the fact that this is running an older version of the Mercedes infotainment. So the way you interact with the infotainment is either with this D-pad or this touchpad. They are not my favorite things to use in the world. When compared to a regular DBX, Aston has done a reasonable job making this feel even more sporty and more exclusive. The primary way they've done that is actually with these seats. I do think it's time for us to put this thing out on the road and go for a drive. Setting off in the DBX 707. First things first, let's use some launch control. Traction control is off. I'm in Sports Plus. Foot all the way on the brake, all the way on the gas. Uh, what Aston Martin has done with their uh, AMG source drivetrain is uh, adequate, to say the least. This thing hauls. some serious ass and their all-wheel drive system does a pretty good job putting it all down even in this wet weather <laughs> um the big i guess difference between this and what you find in like an amg product specifically something like the gls or gle 63s is the gearbox tuning what the Aston engineers have done have made this gearbox feel a lot less clunky than it does in the mercedes products when you leave it in entirely automatic you don't have it in manual mode the car does a good job knowing when it needs a downshift when you get into corners uh, when you leave it in manual it won't auto upshift when you hit rev limiter it, it's much better than what i've experienced at something like an amg gts or again the gle 63s that we drove earlier last year the other thing that i really like about this car when you're driving it like a sports car because that's what this thing is supposed to feel like an suv with the dynamics of a dedicated sports car is the front end and unlike a bmw the front end despite being very quick to turn in doesn't feel entirely unnatural the way this car uses its hybrid i guess double wishbone front end is when you get in a corner like this it takes a second to set the car gains some dynamic camber and then it just pulls its way through the corner. The front end loads up like a sports car does. It doesn't feel entirely artificial. The steering doesn't have a weird ramp up effect like it does in something like an X5M or an X3M, but I will say it is fairly dead. Though, again, it is linear. And the suspension tuning itself, the car has pretty good body control. You never feel like you're in a 
something really small. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really hide the fact that it's 5,000 pounds, but it still does a good job not wallowing around. It does feel very, very tight. And despite the suspension tuning definitely being a little bit on the firm side, it doesn't totally beat you up. It on a long drive, I've put a lot of time in this car today. You know, when you turn everything back into uh, GT mode, the softest setting, it kind of just turns into a regular luxury SUV, which is exactly what you want in a vehicle like this. It's, it's really, really impressive. I mean, again, it should be at the, the, the price tag it's at, but this car is, it's definitely one of the most impressive SUVs I've ever driven by a bud. <laughs> if you have the means and you really value what this car has to offer, which is again, some of the best dynamics in any SUV, blistering speed and that exclusivity you get with an Aston Martin, this has to be on your already very short list. But with that, I think it's time for us to head into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Aston Martin DBX 707. Yes, this was a launch event, and no, we did not manage to put this thing up in the air. But thankfully, I did manage to speak to one of their lead engineers, Andy. And when you compare this thing to many of the other super SUVs, you appreciate that Aston Martin does a really good job in making this thing drive organically. Unlike some of the BMW or Mercedes products that feel very artificial in the way they go about doing what they do best, which is going flat out, this still feels like a more traditional sports car. And this is the closest thing I've driven to a supercar SUV. And I know that's a really stupid cliche, but it's the truth. The, the way this car can just tear up a back road is not like anything I've ever experienced. This is a hyper niche product. At over a quarter million US dollars, you have to have serious bullion to be able to afford the Aston Martin DBX. And on top of that, you have to be someone who prioritizes amazing driving dynamics over some of the more gimmicky technology, or, or for that matter, even modern technology, because that's what really hurts the Aston. The infotainment and some of the you know, gimmicks you're expecting in some of these hyper expensive SUVs, the Aston does not have. But in its place is some of the best driving dynamics, an amazing drivetrain, and a very, very well-built interior. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.